So uh, there's kind of two reasons. Uh, well, well, next we're going to talk about estimating the pore pressure, but but we can directly measure it, uh, particularly in in high permeability formations. So in high permeability formations, uh, it's relatively easily to measure it. We can measure it with a wire line. Uh, we go down, we isolate. Um, Isolate a piece of the you know a section of the borehole, you know near the wall, and then you can sort of isolate the formation pressure from the annular pressure, and you can actually measure it via that, right? Of course, it's not done that often because you have to stop drilling to do that, run the wire line down there. And so uh, the other way is uh, again in, in in highly permeable media, you can get a pretty good estimation from the mud weight, right? Because uh, the reservoir will tend to, to take mud, to, to take on mud, uh, if, you're, if your mud weight is higher than the pore pressure, and vice versa, it'll take, the, the annulus will take on reservoir fluid if you're below, right? So ideally, you'd be perfectly balanced, uh, and, and in that case, you're, you're basically, mud weight is right at the pore pressure. I say ideally, it depends on what your goals are. You can even drill underbalanced if you want, and, and some people do it. So there, there are kind of two scenarios where we want to really need to estimate the pore pressure. Uh, one of those is, is from uh, basically sonic reflections of ahead of the drill bit. We want to be able to anticipate any rapid change in pore pressures so that we can manage a manage our mud weight, right, and we don't have kicks. The, the other one is in shales, okay? Shales are such low permeability that it's very difficult to measure the permeability, e even in the laboratory, right, but much less in the well bore. It can be very difficult, and so in those cases, uh, we want to sort of estimate the pore pressure. And, you know, we, we do that through a s sort of a series of um, laboratory experiments and observations, you know, while drilling and other things. And so, um, also from, from uh, sonic logs. So, there's something called a confined compaction experiment. So this is essentially something you do in the laboratory. You take a core and you confine it. Typically, you, you confine it like in a steel cylinder, okay? And then you're gonna apply an axial load to it. So I guess let me draw you a picture. You're going to have a core. And then we're going to take that core and put it in a steel sleeve. Because the steel is much stronger than a rock. And then we're going to apply an axial load to it. And of course, that's going to cause the pores to collapse, right? We're going we're gonna to squeeze out the porosity of the material. We do that, and, and then we can make measurements uh, of the basically the porosity as a function of the effective vertical stress. So remember, that's effective vertical stress. So the effective vertical stress is the vertical stress minus the pore pressure. So these can be done uh, these can be done in a way that you can control the pore pressure as well, right? And you get this sort of compaction curve. So the dots there, uh, the dots there are actual measurements that are taken. And the line is really this guy, right? So it's a, it's a shell compaction relation that was first uh, discovered by this guy, Athey, in like 1930. Or so I say discovered, proposed, I guess. This is Athey's relation. And that, that was the, the curve on that line, and you saw it fit the data pretty well. So in, in this, you know, you're just saying that the porosity is a function of some initial porosity, an exponential function, some initial porosity times an exponential function of beta times the effective vertical stress. And beta is some fitting parameter, right? So that's some parameter you would fit. And that's what that curve was on the on the previous line, and so uh, 
if you, if, you know, if you fit this in the laboratory, right, if you go to the laboratory and do these experiments and you have a good fit, meaning you basically figure out what, what um, phi zero is and what beta is, well, then you can go back and go back to the, um, to the field and it's easy to estimate the vertical stress, right? The vertical stress is one PSI per foot. So if you want to know what the pore pressure is at a depth, right, and you have some notion of what the porosity is, you can just solve this equation for the pore pressure, right? But you have to use this with caution because of the overpressure. Right? This this would only work. Uh, this would only work if if you have a hydrostatic pressure. If, if, you, if you have an overpressure scenario, um, you can actually get, so this is, a, this is real data for a scenario where you have overpressure at depth. You can, in, instead of having a trend that, you know, th that curve, um, Athey's relation, predicts that as long as I keep going down due to increasing vertical stress, I'm going to, I'm going to continually collapse the the porosity, right? I'm going to have a monotonic trend where the porosity is going to go down and down and down. But there are cases where, due to overpressures, you can have appreciable uh, gains. You can have appreciable gains in porosity at depth. Okay, and so you have to be careful that you know that you don't. You know, this would be a useful relationship if you if you believe it to be roughly hydrostatic. Right? And, So um, you can also, you know, basically this is this is the the solution to that equation, right? This is the solution to that equation for pore pressure, and what you can do is you can, inf in, you know, we need the pro in order to be able to, you know, the initial porosity and beta we can get in the laboratory, but we need, um, you know, we need some idea of what the porosity is in the field. And we can get that from P waves. So there's this formula where you know this is F is acoustic formation factor, uh, and this is the matrix transit time. And so, you know, from some acoustic waves, then you can determine you know equation for the porosity, um, and and basically from the P waves, uh, this this is how you'd come up with F. So you you know you have F, and then you can figure out what the porosity is, and then you plug it back in. And this data here was actually uh, done. So the, the figures are right, written right there in the book. But um, and oddly enough, they're they're not even close to each other in the book. Or at least uh, these two and and this one are ten pages apart. Anyway, uh, the two figures on the left were used to find the porosity, which is then plugged into this formula and used to uh, determine or estimate what the pore pressures are at depth. Yeah. Um, what is beta, it, beta is just a, f a fitting parameter in that Athey's relationship. So, well, you'd go to the lab and do those compaction experiments, right? So you, you'd um, let's just go back. So you'd go to the lab and you'd do these experiments, right? And, and you collect the data. So that's what those dots are. Right? That line is the best fit to those via this equation. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you just you'd plot. You do a least squares fit where you know this is your assumed function, and you do some minimization routine so that you get the best fit uh, for beta. So any, you know, it, like MATLAB or any any type of software like that can do this, right? You you put in a, you give it the data, and you tell it what function you are, and then and then you want you know what function you have, 
and then what parameters you want to minimize with respect to that data so that your function fits the data as best as possible. Okay, so, uh, all right. so th this is sort of chapter two, which covers you know the, the how pore pressure affects the total stress and the mechanisms of pore pressure, you know wh where they come from. And of course, you know if you can read it if you there's a lot more details in there uh, about you know particularly about the mechanisms. It covers a lot of that far more in depth than I did because. You know, what we want to do is solve problems, solve geomechanical problems, and, you know, th th this is sort of a, uh, the, the, the mechanisms, other things, th that's just sort of like stuff you'd memorize or, you know, you have a clue of where this comes from. But as an engineer, we want to solve geomechanics problems. We just, if, you know, give me the pore pressure, Mr. Wellogger, and I'll tell you if this fault, you know, fault's going to slip or whatever, right? So, so now we're going to move towards our first sort of application of geomechanics, okay? And it's going to have to do with f faults, okay? So, uh, you know, in an effort to quit, stop boring you and let's stop, start solving some problems, we, ha we know enough now about stress and about pore pressure, and that's all we need, really, to, to be able to determine if faults are going to slip. We also need to know something about the friction on the fault, but that's not that big a deal, okay? So. So that's sort of where we're 